Social Zoom Factor, episode 181. Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Does your current website or blog got you down? Do you need a better hosting platform to help your business zoom turbo versus speeds that are slow and holding you back? No need to look any further than our partner HostGator. Have an existing site? No worries. They can seamlessly transfer your existing site for free and have you zooming turbo in no time for as little as $4 a month. Check them out at HostGator.com and save 30% on new hosting packages using the coupon code Zoom or simply go to socialzoomfactor.com slash HostGator. The Marketing Nuts Agency helps companies transform their social and digital business from the inside out. Visit their website at www.themarketingnutswithaz.com for a client list, case studies, and some amazing free resources to get you started down the path of success. Hey there, Zoomers, and welcome to Social Zoom Factor. This is your host, Pam Moore. Today, we are talking about another amazing topic, and we are talking about events and specifically around integrating social media into your events and how can you turn up the amplification, turn up the engagement, turn up your sales, and of course, your ROI of everything you are doing with your events by integrating social media. So that, my friends, is what we are talking about today. And I have a packed podcast for you because I am sharing 25 tips that are going to help you increase the ROI and the success of your event, whether that be online or offline by utilizing social media. And as usual, everything I referenced today, which includes a ton of resources and podcasts, I have done podcasts on almost every single tip that we're talking about today. So I will link to some of those, the best ones, just go to socialzoomfactor.com slash 181. And then we also have a white paper that you can download with these same tips. Go to socialzoomfactor.com slash social events. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have attended, managed, or spoken at an event in the past few years, chances are really high that you probably noticed some major changes in communication because conversations are going to an entire new dimension, right? So no longer is the conversation limited to the dialogues that are happening on the floor or from the keynote speaking stage to the audience, okay? Nor are they limited to the breakout rooms or even in the the secret books that you're passing out or the website or the, you know, the special site that member site that you're requiring a password to. Now, events are the perfect medium for you to fully embrace the power of social media. And social media, as you know, is one big fat conversation. And social networks simply serve as a platform for communication to help you build community, generate brand awareness, increase customer intimacy and loyalty, and the list goes on and on. So if you are hosting an event, my guess is that you are looking to achieve maybe a few of these objectives. Okay. Do you want to improve customer intimacy? You want to know your customers better. Do you want to increase brand awareness? Are you looking to establish and position your company? Are you looking to learn about the market or the competition? Are you wanting to earn support of some loyal brand evangelists and influencers in your industry. Maybe you want to increase the amount of earned media, the quality of earned media that you are receiving. 
Are you wanting to identify and establish relationships with your partners and the people in your broader ecosystem? Maybe you want to build community. You want to generate new leads. You want to, of course, sell more products and services, improve customer satisfaction so you can know those customers better and keep the conversation going after the event. That's a goal that a lot of marketers should have when it comes to events. And we'll talk about that. But for the purpose of this podcast today, I'm going to offer you some solid tips that are going to help you achieve higher business and marketing results by leveraging, integrating, and tapping into the power of social media at your business conferences and events. So by no means can I give you a full playbook here in you know 30 minutes that we're probably going to have together. Instead, I want to give you some of the highlights and then I'm pointing you to that white paper that you can download at socialzoomfactor.com slash social events. And that will give you everything we're talking about today in a white paper. Alrighty. So tip number one for you to be able to turn up the volume for your ROI at your events with social is you must have a plan. So you need to write that plan. And as I talk to you on every single podcast and blog post, you are not ever going to have a result when it comes to social media if you don't have a plan for how you're going to get there. So what business goals and objectives are you supporting? Failing to plan is planning to fail. So know where you are going and why. And particularly when it comes to social media, even if your company is new to social media, I will guarantee you that people that are attending your event are not new to social media. We're going to talk about some of these things today, but there is much risk for you if you don't figure out how you are going to manage your social media. How are you going to manage the conversation? How are you going to listen to what's being said about you? It's much better that you become part of that healthy force driving the success of your event with social media than ignoring it and letting the conversations be happening online and you don't even know they exist. And I am shocked at how many events I attend and that I'm even paid to speak at sometimes where people are ending up that are attending the event are making up their hashtag for example, they're driving that online conversation instead of that brand who's hosting that event, driving and being a healthy part of that conversation. So you need to plan your work and work your plan. Well, at the same time, tip number two is to not over focus on social so much that you forget event marketing 101. And I honestly have seen this happen far too many times where people are forgetting that they're running an event. They get so caught up in the social and digital aspects of it that they forget, you know, to have signs telling people where they need to go or making sure that people have water. So make sure you're, you're still attacking those event marketing 101 tasks and that you don't, you know, spend all this money having a social media lounge, but then you your, the people who are attending don't even know where it's at or they don't know where the breakout sessions are or they don't know what the hashtag is, which we're going to talk about. Tip number three is make sure that you align social where it can have the greatest benefit for your event attendees and partners. So as much as I hate to assume, I'm going to assume that you have accomplished a number one, which we talked about, which was having a plan with goals and objectives. And assuming that you do, then your focus should now be on on your audience and attendees and helping them reach their goals and objectives, okay? So you need to know why are people attending your event? What are your goals and objectives? What are the goals and objectives of your audience? And don't just think of social as a stunt marketing type of thing. Truly focus on the needs of your audience and the chances of your content being shared beyond the walls of the venue are very high. You want your content to spread like wildfire and social can do that for you. It can help you increase sales at you know that event that you have next year. So you want to build community and so you need to make sure you are aligned to those goals of your audience. And we just came out of the inspiration age series. We're coming out of that right now. 
Hopefully you've been listening to some of those podcasts, but we've been talking about how important it is for you to inspire your audience to connect with you with a goal to help them achieve their objectives. And when you help your audience achieve their objectives, you then achieve your objectives by default. Okay. Inspire, connect, achieve. And that is so important when it comes to events. Tip number four is to integrate and think about post show before pre-show. So before you're even planning pre-show, you also need to be thinking about what are you going to do after the event. And the more that you can integrate it up front when developing your plan versus doing a bolt on social media as a band-aid, the higher your return is going to be. So make sure that you've set the clear alignment of goals and objectives and you know where it's going to have that positive business impact and include social with the other key communication mediums that you're using for the conference event. So this could include things like email communications. If you're doing direct mail, if you have a little magazine thing that's going out, I know a lot of large events we work with are still doing this. In-person, pre-show networking meetings, flyers. If you're doing pre-event webinars, post-event webinars, websites, maybe you got the little flash drive things you're passing out uh, with the presentations on there. But think about pre during and post show together. So if you're setting up private social media groups, for example, maybe a private LinkedIn group, a private Facebook group, you want to know how you're going to build community after the event as well as before the event because part of the biggest benefit of social is that you can keep that pulse of that relationship going long after that event is over. So much easier than before we had social media. Tip number five is to do a social media audit prior to the event. And we do a ton of these with our clients. And particularly if you are new to social media or maybe you feel that your social media is kind of all over the place, you need to go do a quick audit on your social media profiles. Are they in need of an update? Are you delivering a consistent brand message across the platforms? Who is going to tweet? Who's going to post to Facebook? How are you going to get the images to uh, Instagram? to Twitter? Are you tapping into the power of Twitter video? How are you going to ensure that your message stays on brand? And does your current team have the needed skills to launch a social event or a conference? If not, how are you going to get them trained in time? Or how are you going to bring in third-party resources like an agency or a consultant that can help you? And if you need help, reach out to our agency. We're at themarketingnutswithaz.com. We do a ton of work with events. This is our day job, my friends. So you need to know what that risk is. How are you going to manage the risk? What will you do if a PR social crisis should happen? Don't wait until it happens to figure out what you're going to do. If your hashtag gets spammed with pornography or, you know, or competitors bullying you the first day, you need to know how you're going to handle that. All right. So tip number six is focus and Tip number five, which was doing the audit, can really get you all over the place if you're not careful because as you do the audit, you're gonna see so many opportunities for things that you need to do better. But you need to focus. And the worst thing you can do is attempt to be everything to everyone on every platform. Instead, select the social networks that best align with your audience. So what platforms is your audience hanging out on? What platforms are you going to use and why? Be something to somebody versus nothing to nobody. So you don't want to force your audience onto a social network if they're not using it, okay? So that would be like forcing everybody onto Periscope or Meerkat if you know for a fact your audience is not using it. So you need to know there may be some social networks you want to try to get them on, like Twitter is one of those that's really good because Twitter is a great place to have that conversation. But you need to know, are they on Facebook? Is it worth it for you to do some activities on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Where are they hanging out? Okay, so you need to know the demographics and the psychographics of your audience. If you don't know how to do that, get an agency or a consultant to help you. 
Tip number seven is know your event attendees, the partners and the broader ecosystem. So the more you know about the audience, the partners, everybody that is attending and supporting your event, the more that you can get in their heads and understand why they're attending uh, their event. Why are they going to spend money on the registration fees? Why should they take a day off from work or away from their kids on the weekend to attend the event? What is in it for them that's different than they can get on your website or all the free webinars that you offer? Why should an influencer give a rip about your event, let alone tweet on your behalf? What is in it for everybody who is participating? You better be able to answer that question. Why should they care? Tip number eight is educate your partners and make your partners accountable. So inform your employees and partners of your plan. So ensure that they understand your objectives and goals as well as goals and objectives of the attendees. They need to know why are you doing this event? Who is attending? Make it known that you also have a genuine, real authentic interest in helping your partner your partners achieve their goals and objectives. The tighter you can bring your key stakeholders and partners into your inner circle, the better your results are going to be. So if you have strategic partners, don't just leave them on the outliers wondering what's going on. Have a, a pre-call, have a webinar, say, here's what we're doing. Same thing if you're working with influencers, okay? Bring people together pre-show, during show, and post-show. Those are your leaders, my friends. Tip number nine is to think out of the box, okay? Consider technology and mediums that maybe you're not even 100% familiar with. And this may be where it could be helpful to hire an agency or a consultant to help you if you are not comfortable with social. You need to know what the latest trends are, what the latest technologies are. And I'm a big believer in not chasing shiny objects. If you listen to my podcast, you probably know that. We need to set goals and objectives. We all have a problem in chasing shiny objects. I'm guilty as charged, but I'll tell you, my business is successful today because I'm able to control my desire to chase shiny objects. But when it comes to events, when it comes to a public type of event that you are doing, you better know what technology, what social networks, what live video streaming technology your audience is using. So you need to think out of the box and you need to think about what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but make sure that you are taking that program to the next level. You're leveraging social to do something maybe that hasn't already been done by every other event in your industry. Tip number 10 is consider a social influencer outreach program. So if you are new to social and you don't have the reach or the relationships for you to really be able to amplify your event, to turn up that volume on the social ecosystem, you need to explore working with others. And we have done a ton of this work with many clients, large and small, and we help them identify influencers in their industry and niche, basically people who already have an audience. So it's about the OPC baby, you know me, other people's content, other people's community, not to be confused with the OPP, you know me. And I have a podcast I did on this a while back about how to tap into the power of the OPC. You want to tap into other people's community and other people's content. You want them to share the content that they are learning about your event. You want to tap into the community that they have listening to them. All right. So consider a social influencer outreach program. Uh, focus on pre, during, and post show again. Every single one of these activities is not just a pre and during event. You want to make sure you're building those relationships with those influencers after the event as well. Tip number 11 is to make sure that you hire the right team, both internal and external. So do more than fill the tweet and the Facebook seats. If you want to increase your brand awareness, you want to turn up amplification during the event. Hiring an agency that's just going to hire 20 interns from the local college is not going to get you the reach you need. And I know some of you hate hearing this, but chances are highly unlikely that they are going to help get your message or tweet 
read by an audience who has an interest in a relationship with you or your company. Why? Because they don't have that audience. If you are leveraging an agency that's just bringing noisemakers in human form to your agency that are just going to set up some accounts for your agency for your event and tweet about it, who's following those people? Nobody's, all they're going to do is turn up the noise level. Yes, the number of your tweets may go up, but that doesn't mean that anybody is listening to it. So make sure you know the difference between social media buzz and social media value, that the content and the conversations that are happening are driving a business or a marketing outcome, that you're bringing people closer to your brand. And you are much better working with uh, somebody who can help you develop and execute to a real plan that includes relevant influencer outreach and engagement. You want people to be facilitating the conversation that understand your content and that they can tweet and share your content, visual images with context and with relevancy, not just noise. Tip number 12 is to share your best stuff. Okay, this is pretty simple. Don't hold back. This is your time to shine and don't be afraid that your competition is watching you. Don't be afraid that everyone's gonna copy you. It is your event. People are paying to be at your event. So you need to be sharing your best co- your best content, visual, video, audio, real time, you know, things that are planned. You need to make sure that you can stand out from the noise by delivering value, which leads us to tip number 13, which is to focus on real value to your audience and attendees. And do not lose sight in between all the hashtags and the Twitter profiles and Facebook posts of what this event is for. Keep your objectives, your goals, and your priorities focused on the real needs of your audience. What problems are you helping them solve in their life or business by attending your event? What keeps them up at night and how can you talk openly and candidly about that during the event? How will you inspire them to connect with you pre, during, and after the event? How are you going to focus on their needs and success, regardless how successful your Twitter campaign or the social engagement may be. Focus more on giving your audience something to tweet about versus getting them to tweet. Huge difference. When you're focusing on value, you're not worried about how many tweets you're getting, okay? You're, you're more concerned with giving your audience value. If you give your audience value, they're gonna tweet about it, okay? And if you do the first, then the second is gonna take care of itself. They're gonna share it. So I know we're getting deep into some content here. I still have loads more tips to share with you. We're gonna be talking about hashtags and visual experiences. So please give a quick listen to our sponsors and they are what keeps this podcast zooming. So I will be back in just a minute. Would you like to get your business Zooming Turbo online, but don't know where to start? Is website development not your thing? Check out HostGator.com for all of your hosting needs. They have easy one-click WordPress installs or drag and drop website builders. If you need even more help, their website design, setup, SEO, and even managed services can have you Zooming in no time. We have been hosting our own and client sites at HostGator for years, and I can personally validate that their service by far beats out their competition. With one little tweet, email, or chat conversation, they are there and ready to help you Zoom or resolve any issues that may come up 24-7, 365 days of the year. HostGator has the capacity to grow with you and scale when and how you need them to without headache or costing you a fortune. Check out HostGator.com today and save 30% on new hosting packages with coupon code Zoom or simply go to socialzoomfactor.com slash HostGator. Again, that's social zoomfactor.com slash host gator. Do you ever feel stuck in a rut like your online business and social business isn't all that it could be? The Marketing Nuts Agency helps small businesses clear up to the Fortune 50 brands, provide clarity and vision for current and future programs. The Marketing Nuts believe in ROI-driven decision-making while still inspiring audiences with relevant content. From social business strategy and consultation, influencer marketing, to corporate training and workshops, and fully outsourced digital and social programs. 
The Marketing Nuts helps you prioritize your investment, impact business goals, and inspire your audience to invest in a relationship with you. To start the conversation, visit www.themarketingnutswithaz.com. I'm back. Okay, let's finish talking about our last 12 tips. We have 25 total. So tip number 14 is to select a Twitter hashtag early. And I've done a ton of podcasts on hashtags. I'm not going to go into detail today. If you don't know what a hashtag is, you need to go listen to a couple of the podcasts I did. I'll make sure I link to them in the show notes page at socialzoomfactor.com slash 181 including a real concise podcast I did on hashtags in a nutshell. It will give you everything you need to know on hashtags. So don't wait until the day of the event to decide and start using your Twitter hashtag and building community. Start using the hashtag the first day you send an email, the first day you post an update to your social networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever it may be about your event. Be consistent and leverage the hashtag to build community and to keep that conversation rocking during all phases of pre, post, pre, during, and post event. Okay. When I walk up to an event organizer, at, when we're kicking off an event, and if I'm on site attending an event and I say, what's your hashtag? And they look at me like, ah, oh, and they have to ask somebody, oh, hashtag fail, my friends. You can't do that. Everybody on your team needs to know what your hashtag is. It should be blasted everywhere for people to see. They're not going to share your content and you're not going to be able to easily tie that, what content that they're sharing to your event if you don't have a hashtag to do that with. So the hashtag is going to be the glue for which your community is tied together virtually, whether that be on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google Plus, okay? Tip number 15 is be ready for plan B. So what happens if your hashtag gets spammed the first, second, or third day of the event? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if some porno idiot starts sending porno to your hashtag? You better have a plan B. What is your backup hashtag? What if one of the tools you plan to use goes bad? What if it crashes? What if the hotel or the venue has Wi-Fi issues? You better hope for the best, but definitely plan for the worst. So all I can say, every critical area of your event, particularly where you are integrating social and digital, you better have a plan B. All right. Tip number 16 is to create social visual experiences. Did you know that our brains process visual information 60,000 times faster than text? We live in a visual social world. An event without pictures is like chicken and dumpling without the yum, people. So embrace imperfect perfection. You don't have to be the best cameraman or woman on the planet. Use an iPhone, iPad, Android, or your device of choice and make sure that you are continually feeding photos, capturing the great event that you're hosting and that you're pushing those to Instagram, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, and that you have a plan ahead of time of how and who is going to do this, okay? The images can offer insight into your brand, the people within your walls, the customers, and the partners supporting you, all right? Use the photos to emotionally connect with your audience near and far. So whether they're in the room or whether they are across the globe, you can bring people together and there are all sorts of tools that you can use to do a visual uh, stream on a wall uh, to showcase images that are being posted with that hashtag. And if you need help, contact us. We can help you figure some of those things out. Tip number 17 is remember you're marketing to an audience of audiences. And Brian Solis a while back had written a post titled An Audience with an Audience of Audiences. And I will link to it in the show notes page. But he nailed it. You are not just sending a tweet uh, or post posting that to Instagram or Facebook, you are posting it with the goal that people are going to share it with their audience. So that should change how you look at content. You need to be thinking of content 
on a global scale. Because if you create good content, whether you like it or not, my friends, it's going to go global. And that is a good problem to have. Tip number 18 is to assign clear roles and responsibilities. Bottom line, if you have something that needs to get done, assign somebody to do it. And don't assume you're going to figure it out the night before the event. Document all the roles and make that document available to everyone involved, including people who are executing the event as well as partners and employees. And establish that escalation path in case something goes wrong or in case somebody's sick or in case somebody gets called to jury duty. I've seen that happen and everything's stuck in that person's head and nobody else knows what's going on with the event. And you can't let that happen when it comes to the social aspects. So assign One person is my recommendation to be the go-to person for all things social media related. And then that way they can help answer questions and then they can help delegate and solve the problems as they come up because you know they're going to come up, right? Tip number 19 is make it easy for others to engage. So get in the head of your attendees and partners like we've talked about. And remember, they are going to be experience massive info overload. Okay. So media is everywhere. And no matter what event, no matter how close the people attending your event is, there are still people that will end up spamming that hashtag. Okay. If your hashtag starts to take off on Twitter, there's going to be other people from your event and partners. They're going to start to sell on that hashtag. Okay. So you need to make it very clear and give people the steps of how they're going to engage with you. And though it may be easy for you to remember the spelling of your CEO or the Twitter handle of a keynote speaker, it may be the first time these attendees have ever seen these speakers or have ever met your CEO that's on stage. So publish the hashtags, publish the Twitter handles, publish um, these on posters, on signs, on display screens at the bottom of every single presentation Okay, try creating a reference card with all key social media and key speaker information. And we do this for a ton of our clients when we are helping them with their events. And if they're bringing in influencers within their industry, we'll make sure we have a nice little packet, putting everything in a tight little box for them and little cards that they can carry around that has all the important profiles and Twitter handles and hashtags because people are only going to share your content as well as you make it easy for them to share and engage. Okay. Tip number 20 is don't assume people know what actions you want them to take. So if you want them to visit a website, include the URL. If you want them to retweet content, then provide the Twitter handle, the hashtag, and the specific content you want them to share. People can't take an action unless unless they are clear on what it is you want them to do. And don't assume they know if you haven't told them. So this is specifically true if you are working with influencers from your industry, maybe you are bringing in um, big time influencers and you want them to help amplify your event and share it with their communities, the OPC. And you're not telling them what to share. You're not giving them their Twitter, the Twitter handles. You're not giving them hashtags. I can't tell you how many events I've even been paid to attend, to help amplify or to, you know, be there and do some, some type, different types of media that we do. And I have to hunt down spellings of Twitter handles. I have to hunt down names of speakers. I have to hunt down hashtags. These are for fortune 50 brands, my friends, this should not be happening. So if you are a small business and you've been struggling with this, you can know that the big brands are struggling with it too. It's not just you. So hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better, but you have got to tell everybody involved what you want them to do. Tip number 21 is so important and it is don't be afraid to set requirements for presenters. Require your presenters be part of the social conversation. Put that in your contracts if you can. Don't hesitate in asking them to provide their Twitter handle and event hashtag at the bottom of every slide. If you are providing the presentation template for presenters to use, make sure you include appropriate placeholders in your templates. Hardly any events that I work with ever do this. And I speak at a ton of events on an international level and maybe... 0.05% of of event organizers are doing this. It's such a miss, my friends, because 
everybody's looking at the screen. They're looking at the decks and there's no consistency that's happening with presentations. And even if people are using their own templates, if you're allowed, allowing your speakers to use their own templates, you still can ask that they include the hashtag and their Twitter handle and maybe even your event Twitter handle or your company Twitter handle at the bottom, okay? Particularly if you are paying them to be there. And when I am speaking at events, I try to provide as much value as I possibly can. And I am always asking that information up front. And I am amazed how many of these event organizers and marketers don't have that information. And so then a lot of times I end up not getting it into the deck because I didn't, they couldn't tell me what their hashtag was. So this is where you need to, to plan, plan your work and work your plan so you can tap into the power of the OPC, other people's communities. Okay. Tip number 22 is confirm with your chosen venue that they are going to be able to support your digital needs. This is huge. You need to triple verify that you are going to have Wi-Fi that is going to work properly. There is no way your show is going to be amplified, the content of your show, if people cannot access the internet. If they cannot get on their smartphone, on their iPhone, on their Android, and be able to tweet, take pictures, and share the content that they are listening to and watching, they're not it's not going to go viral, my friends. So you need to make sure you're double checking what's happening at the venue. And I have been to so many events where the internet has just crashed and you know, that the organizers are losing so much value with that. So do that work homework up front. Tip number 23 is to set up a social measurement system early so that you can track results. Don't wait until after the event to track social media results. You should be tracking hashtags and engagement and key influencers and topics, partners who's engaging way before your event starts. You need to be setting that stuff up ahead of time. Don't wait until during the morning or the night before the event kicks off and be like, okay, what's a hashtag? Everybody go set up the reports. You should be doing that ahead of time. You should know who are your influencers? Who are the key players? Who do, does your team need to be on the lookout for and make sure that they are engaging? You should be creating Twitter lists. I did a podcast not too long ago on how to create a Twitter list and you should be creating a Twitter list for maybe all of your event um, organizers, all of your event partners, all of your event speakers, okay? Leverage social to help build community prior, during, and after the event. Okay, tip number 24 is to make sure, and this ties back to one we talked about earlier, but make sure you are up to speed on what is happening with live stream. Okay, you need to make sure you have a policy of how you are going to handle people that are attending your event and bringing in their their smartphone and wanting to live stream your event publicly. Okay, so most event organizers nowadays are all for this. They're like, let it rip, right? Let's go ahead and let's let people record this and share it. However, I've spoke and at several events over the past few months where they did not want people to share that content because when they or share the content via video, because when people are paying $2,000 plus for a seat to attend that event, there's some organizers that are not comfortable with that. And they're in an industry that maybe hasn't caught up to the times with that. So you need to understand and know and have a plan going into it. How are you? you going to handle live streaming? What happens if the Wi-Fi cannot handle all of the live streamers at your event who are wanting to use platforms like Periscope and Meerkat to broadcast that? Maybe people are doing blabs, right? If you don't know these things, you probably think I'm talking in a different language. But you need to learn these things. And if you don't know them, you need to work with a consultant or an agency who can help make sure that you're mitigating that risk. Okay. So what is your policy? What if the live stream starts to, you know, crash the Wi-Fi and then nobody can tweet everything. You better have a plan for how you're going to mitigate that risk. And then if you are promoting the live stream, 
Make sure you're tapping into that. Make sure that you're doing live stream yourself, right? Set up your accounts ahead of time. Set up your accounts on, there's a a site called catch.me that you can make sure all your periscopes are automatically being cut for you. And I can't believe how many brands I'm seeing that are wasting time doing periscope. These are big brands, but they are not even setting up the catch.me so they have, they can leverage that asset after the fact, okay? It's gone, you know, uh, Periscope has a limited time within 24 hours. If, if people haven't seen that video, it's gone if you are not doing your homework ahead of time. So make sure you have a way to engage people. You know what hashtags you're going to be using. You are letting people know what live streaming platforms you're going to be using. Maybe you're deciding you're going to stick with Ustream or your own custom streaming platform, or you're going to stick with Hangouts or whatever it may be. Let people know how you prefer them to share content, how you prefer them to watch your content. Where can they watch a recorded version of that live stream after the fact, okay? And I could do a whole series on live streaming and how to manage these types of events with content. We've been doing this for years and there are a ton of new tools that are coming up and it's really changing how brands are having to think about this because just as they get their own live streaming platforms finally working, now they're having to deal with the power of the the mobile live stream that can be in the hands of every single one of your attendees. So embrace the opportunities that that brings immediately, but make sure that you are ready to handle it. Okay. And then last but not least, tip number 25 is to have fun. And I know we've talked about a lot of content and things you need to do today, but remember social media is really one big conversation and one big relationships. Don't just do social don't just be social, be socially relevant and have fun while you're doing it. Your good attitude, your smile is going to shine through even virtually via your tweets, your posts, your images. So roll with the good, the bad and the ugly. And if you do, your attendees are going to love you for it. Your partners are going to love you for it. Your speakers are going to love you for it. Your influencers are going to love you for it. So I thank you so much for listening to this podcast today. I know it's a little longer than the ones that we usually do, but I know it's jam-packed with some solid information that I know is going to help a lot of people. We've been receiving a ton of questions from our clients recently on events, and we're helping a lot of cool events coming up, new news coming on that very soon. But I figured I would just get some content out there. I know people are, are really needing this. So I hope it helped you. Make sure you go download the white paper that we talked about. Go to socialzoomfactor.com slash social events. And it gives you these tips that we talked about today in written form. So best of luck to you. I wish you the most of success with your events in the coming year. That's a wrap. If you're ready to zoom your business and zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor. Oh, 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 oh,